legislative body at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the depository of their public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with manly firmness his invasions on the right of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolution to cause others to be elected, whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remaining in the meantime exposed to all dangers of invasion from without and convulsions within. He has endeavored to pre prevent populations of these states for that purpose obstructing the laws of naturalization of foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage migrations hither and raising the conditions of new appropriations of land. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their own and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither swarms of officers to harass our people and eat up their substance. He has effected to render the military independent of and superior to the civil power. Officers, go home! He go has home. combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our Constitution and unacknowledged by our law, giving his assent to their acts of pretended legislation. For quartering large bodies of armed troops among us. Send them home. For protecting them by a mock trial from punishment for any murders which they should commit on the inhabitants of these states for cutting off our trade in all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us, in many cases, the benefits of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond the seas to be tried for pretended offenses, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing wherein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it at once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule in these colonies for suspending our legislature and declaring themselves invested with the power to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war upon us. He has plundered our seas ravaged our coast, burn our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. Officers, go home, dead or alive! He is, at this time, transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation, and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and perfidity, fear, fearlessly parallel in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy the head of a 
civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens, taken captive on the high seas, to bear arms against their country, and to become the executioner of their friends and brethren, who to fall themselves by their hand. He has exercised, excited, domestic insurrections amongst us, and endeavored to bring on the inhabitants of our frontiers the merciless Indian savage, whose known war rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages sexes, and conditions. In every stage of these oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may define a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in our attentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over them. We have reminded them of the certain of our immigration and settlement here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity. We have conjured them by the ties of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They, too, have been deaf to the voice of justice and of consanguinity. We must, therefore, acquiesce in the necessity which denounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind. Enemies in war, in peace, friends. Treason! We, therefore, the representatives of the United States States of America. In General Congress Assembly, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the World for the rectitude of our intentions, do, and in the name and by the authority of the good people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these United Colonies are, and upright ought to be, free and independent states. Oh, no. That they are absolved from all allegiance to the British Crown, and all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain. Disloyalty! And ought to be totally dissolved. And that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish government, and do all other acts and things which independent states may have right to do. President. 